In film, we sculpt time, we sculpt behavior, and we sculpt light. That's one of my favorite film quotes by David Fincher. So in today's video, I wanna talk about sculpting light. When I'm not working with a crew, I get hired for, to do a lot of like one man band interview type stuff. I recently bought my first light. It's an FNV two by one LED panel. I definitely like this light. It's better than a lot of like cheaper LED panels that I used. It's very color accurate, has decent output. I wouldn't say it's as strong as like a light panels Astra, but you know, that's kind of like the top of the line. After I bought this light, I decided that I wanted to be somewhat confident with it. So I hit up my friend Ray, who's a working DP, and I said, hey, teach me how to use this light. Now, one thing about Ray, he's always pushing me to think bigger when it comes to cinematography. He's always like, write more lights, get an RE sky panel. We need a helicopter for this shot. More explosions, more cowbell. Typical DP, always pushing you for more lights. So I wanted us to light two different, very common lighting scenarios. One uh, in a room with a large window, and then one in a room with no window. That covers the majority of kind of like corporate or documentary interviews that you're gonna do. And after I wanna share the results and compare what one light looks like versus two lights. Now the second light we used was a Quasar four foot crossfade LED tube. The camera we shot on was an Ari Alexa Mini, uh, and we used my contact Zeiss lenses. For all you glass nerds out there, the specific lens that we used was the contact Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4 MMJ. Our model for the day was my friend Jen. She's a great photographer. I'm gonna link her IG down below. Definitely check out her photography, give her a follow, a few likes, whatever. All right, let's get to the sculpting light part. You see how I brought that pretentious quote back into the mix here? Don't you feel kind of high end right now? Okay, for our first setup, we sat Jen parallel to the window and used it as our key. And then we set up my LED panel uh, behind the camera and higher uh, up above and use that as fill uh, to fill in the light on our face. For our second setup, we put my LED panel uh, on the same side of the window and use, and use it to like intensify the window light onto our face and then uh, use the quasar tube in the light wagon um, as the fill light uh, behind the camera. Here, I'll put them side by side. Now, Ray gave me some important tips uh, from this setup that really opened up my mind and made me understand this whole sculpting light thing by at least 5% more. The first important concept that Ray taught me was, don't fight the sun, use it to your advantage. That's why we put the subject parallel to the window instead of having her with the back to the window. Now, neither of these lights are powerful enough to over, overpower the window light. So let me say this again. Don't fight the sun. Use it. Now, this next concept that Ray taught me, it really, it really blew my mind because I'd never, I, I'd never heard this before. Wrap the key light going softer as you face the subject. If there's only light coming in from the window over here then it's gonna create like kind of like a harsh shadow line. And then this side will be uh, dark. Fill it in more onto her face. You don't wanna go like completely flat the lighting on her face. I mean, it depends on what you're shooting. If you're shooting like a sunny, very positive co uh, corporate video, then yes, maybe you do wanna wrap it completely, make it very clean and shadowless. But if you're gonna shoot like a uh, kind of edgy documentary or Anything where like the character has some sort of conflict, you want to keep some shadow um, on the on the the opposite side of the key light. How much shadow you're going to keep opposite of the key light? Now that's what that's really what David Fincher means when he says sculpt light. Okay, for our second setup, I wanted to simulate a room um, with no window. So for this setup, we waited until sundown and then we move towards a, a darker part of the loft. So our first setup, in order to create a soft quality of light, we took our LED panel and we turned it away from the subject and we shot it directly into like a 40 inch uh, reflector. The only downside of this is that you lose some output from the light. So this is what it looked like uh, bounced into the reflector with one light. Then Ray said we could make the light even softer if we bounced it, if we bounce the light off the wall. Because uh, if, you, if you bounce that two by one panel off the wall, then the entire wall becomes your light source. That makes the light even softer.
And for the final setup, we kept the LED panel bounced off the wall and then brought in the quasar tube to add more shape and fill to the light. Now this is our two light setup. So in this one, we use three different variations. Here are the three setups side by side. Okay, some tips I learned from Ray on this setup. Take whatever light you have and try to make it bigger and softer. It'll just create a more pleasing quality of light for the skin tones. Now, how do we make it bigger and softer? One way is bouncing off a reflector. Uh, one way is shooting through diffusion, like either through the translucent, the tra shoot the light through the translucent part of the reflector or bounce it off a wall. Or, or if you have a frame, create a frame with some diffusion and shoot it through that. Just remember, soft light is good for skin tone. And a big light can be a soft light and a diffused light can be a soft light. All right guys, I'm gonna leave you today with three tips that Ray gave me on how to get better at lighting. First, master one light first. Build your light kit one light at a time. Get comfortable with one using one light. And the last tip from Ray is, pay attention to the real world. When you walk into a venue or a room, take a look at the lighting. Does it look good? Why does it look good? Does it look bad? Why does it look bad? Analyze your surroundings, pay attention, build your own aesthetic, from looking at the real world. Then you can big, break down the, the principles one step at a time, and then you can emulate that lighting uh, in your lighting setups, in your videos, in your content. All right, guys, let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comments. Give me a comment, like, subscribe, a share, all that fun stuff. Maybe I'll do another video for you guys. Until next time, 